everybody, it's me, Tommy Pecoraro with the Danbury Whalers, formerly the Danville Dashers, and for tonight, for the Federal Hockey League, as we are obviously not in Danbury. And I'm here to bring you guys, watching at home, a bit of a midterm review of the league and the teams that are all in it, as we are now somehow halfway through the season. It's gone really fast. It's been a lot of great hockey and a lot of fun things that have gone on around the league. Uh, you know, I'm going to start off, obviously, with the Whalers currently first place. I'm going to go by order of the teams from top to bottom. The Whalers, what can I say? Phil Esposito's done a great job with them. He's managed to put together a good team year after year after year. That's why they're constantly in first place and always a contender come playoff time and they've been in the finals the past three years. There's been more great players that have come through us of late than I can name. Maybe I'm a little biased working for the team, but it's hard to argue in that aspect when you have leadership like Mike Brown of Redliscom, the scoring ability of Ilya Solarev, and rookies like the recently departed Ian DeLong, Mike Sinella, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. So Danbury is always always a contending team going to Watertown. Now obviously last year with the Privateers, the Wolves now, a big rebrand and a big big shout out to Mr. Tibbles and the rest of the ownership group. They've done a fantastic job here. I can't emphasize that enough. The owners have done a fantastic job here in Watertown, and they brought in some quality players like Justin McDonald and Justin Lonzo, and many more that have done a great job on the ice. They do a great job off the ice with promotions. They even have a mascot this year, and it's really been a really good transformation for Watertown hockey, and I think Chris Erickson, who went to get some water, would agree with me in that sense as well. Now going on to the defending champions, the Dayton Demons. They've had their struggles going through the season a little bit, but what team does it when they're a defending champion? It's always a tough road the season after you win. You go through that honeymoon period, and then you gotta get back to work. And for the most part, they've done a good job with that. Head coach Trevor Karaswitz has done a good job with his guys, and that's why they're still a high-ranking team in the Federal Hockey League in third place. And actually, if I recall correctly, they were recently in second place over Watertown, so they're neck and neck. I should say all three of the top teams, Danbury, Watertown, and Dayton, are neck and neck and neck. Going down to the fourth place team, the Danville Dashers, my former team, they've had a pretty good job of changing over the summer. They had a rebrand, they're now orange and white compared to their gold, black, and white days. They brought in some good players, such as Garrett Sargas, who I believe is leading the team in goals. Andrew Harrison, a former Watertown privateer, has done a good job in the goal scoring department. Returning Dasher, Justin Browson, has been an MVP as a Danville Dasher. I believe he is also one of the other scoring leaders on the team. And Matt Anthony, of course, who is well known here in Watertown, has done a good job in the Nets. Going on, the Berkshire Battalion. Not a lot of expectations were, at least in a good way, expected for Berkshire being an expansion team, but they've really turned a lot of heads. Dan Farrell and now Darren Lane have done a great job with the Battalion. They've brought in some decent crowds. They've made a lot of good promotions. And they've had a lot of good players, Tristan Lisko among them, Marty Unak, and many more. They've done a really good job, and that's why they're a 500 team. They've had a lot of good goaltending out of Louis George, and they should be a good team to watch down the stretch as they battle for that last playoff spot. Now going to Steel City Warriors, they've been, let's just say they haven't been very lucky. Obviously coming in as a Southwest Pennsylvania match at the beginning of the year, converting to the Steel City Warriors under new ownership relatively in the early season. In fact, one game into the season after playing as the Southwest Pennsylvania Magic. Their record hasn't really been good. I believe they're 2-18-2. They've had a lot of struggles, but they've done a good job nonetheless at building the team that they have and making some surprises. The two wins that they had were really convincing wins. And the wins that they did not have, they've taken Dayton to overtime. They gave Dan uh, Danbury a run in one of their games at Steel City, I recall, they're being leading three or four times in the game before Danbury took over the third period. But Steel City's not a team to count. They do have some good players on their squad, some good goaltending. Ryan Huggett being their coach fresh off of playing for the Danville Dashers last season. Another guy I'm very familiar with. And really, you never know what's going to happen as winter in the second half of the season. You never know with Steel City because you don't have to have too much room. It's still pretty early to tell. A big turnaround by Steel City isn't impossible. They do have their work cut off for them, but they do have a chance they're not out of it yet. So my predictions in terms of the season, near coming again, my prediction is going to be Danbury number one, 
Watertown number two, and may I say those two top spots are going to be very, very close as the season progresses as it's been all season long and going towards playoff time. I'm going to go with Dayton, the Demons to be number three. I'm going to go for the Danville Dashers to make the playoffs uh, with the number four seed. I'm going to get Berkshire in as number five, not missing by much, but I don't think they're going to be able to beat out Danville, who's been really hot in the last few weeks of the season. And Steel City, they have a lot of work to do. They're well, they're well behind the eight ball, and it's not impossible to get caught up again, but I just don't think they're going to be able to pull it out. I think they're going to have a much better second half, but I don't think they're going to be able to hold on for a playoff spot maybe next season. So that's my midway recap of the Federal Hockey League. It's been a lot of great hockey this season and a lot more coming. I'm Tommy Pecoraro. Thank you all for watching the Midseason Review.